Today we have brought you the latest Tesla news. Tesla gives back used Model S range after ransom story attracts flack online. Tesla Semi will be incredibly affordable with US's revamped EV tax credit. Tesla supporters are petitioning Senator Manchin to stop excessive PHEV subsidies. And, Tesla Model Y shipments from Giga Texas are hitting their pace. Let's get into all the details. So let's get started. Tesla has seemingly backtracked on its decision to nerf the battery range of a used Model S sedan. The vehicle lost some of its range after Tesla opted to fix a configuration error that it spotted with the all-electric sedan. The issue was shared by longtime Tesla tinkerer Jason Hughes, who operates a business related to the company's electric vehicles and their components. Hughes noted that one of his customers was the third owner of a 2013 Model S60. The vehicle was originally sold with a 60 kWh battery, but after some time, the vehicle's pack was replaced with a 90 kWh pack under warranty. It should be noted that the 90 kWh battery pack was not software limited, so the upgrade effectively turned the vehicle into a Model S90. Its infotainment system listed the 90 kWh battery pack, the car was badged as a Model S90, and its range was also that of a Model S90. The vehicle has since been sold twice. Hughes noted that the Model S third owner eventually went to Tesla for an MCU2 upgrade. Things seemed to go well, at least until Tesla called the new owner to inform him that they found and fixed a configuration mistake with the vehicle. The mistake turned out to be the vehicle's range from its 90 kWh battery. Tesla then software locked the vehicle remotely, resulting in the car losing 80 miles of its range. When the Model S third owner complained and demanded that the vehicle be restored to its previous configuration, the company noted that the 90 kWh battery pack could be unlocked for a fee of $4,500. Hughes noted that the Model S 90 kWh battery can be unlocked without Tesla, but it would have to be disconnected from the company's services. This was something that the EV owner preferred not to do. Fortunately for the model owner, the story promptly gained ground on social media, and it did not take long before motoring publications also covered the issue. Just a day after the story was widely shared on Twitter, Hughes noted that the EV owner was able to get full access to his vehicle's 90 kWh battery capacity again. Another customer who experienced the same issue also received the same treatment. While the story itself is quite controversial, the issue seemed to be caused by an error that Tesla committed years ago. The company's way of fixing its mistake was simply in bad taste. That being said, had Tesla been better with its communication with the Model S3 owners over the years, the company could have avoided any sort of confusion altogether. Moving to the next update, Tesla Semi will be incredibly affordable with US's revamped EV tax credit. Long-range all-electric trucks like the Tesla Semi will not come cheap. Battery costs are declining quickly, but even Tesla still lists its 300-mile Semi variant with an estimated starting price of $150,000. That's higher than the cost of a comparable diesel-powered Class 8 truck, so the Tesla Semi would have to be very compelling to convince drivers and fleet owners to make the switch to electric. With the Schumer Mansion Reconciliation Bill, or the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, vehicles like the Tesla Semi will have more than a fighting chance in the market. The bill allocates $369 billion for programs that help fight climate change and preserve the environment, and it also includes a number of revamped EV tax credits. While the bill's extension of the $7,500 tax credit for consumer electric vehicles may be compelling, it is still important to note that heavy-duty commercial vehicles also stand to gain from the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. As per the bill, commercial vehicles that weigh over 14,000 pounds are eligible for a $40,000 tax credit or an incentive worth 30% of the cost of the vehicle, whichever one is less. The Tesla Semi would likely qualify for these incentives. Granted, the Tesla Semi has been delayed for several years now, though Elon Musk has previously noted 
that he believes the all-electric Class 8 truck will finally enter production sometime next year. This should go in line with Tesla's ramp of its 4680 cells, which are expected to help the company reduce its vehicle production costs. Tesla's official website for the semi indicates that the expected base price of the vehicle's 300-mile variant is $150,000. With a $40,000 incentive, the Tesla Semi could be purchased at a price that is more affordable than a Tesla Model S and Model X Plaid, without incentives. That's a very good deal for an all-electric truck that comes with autopilot as standard and which consumes less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile. Interestingly enough, some states already have generous incentives for battery electric Class 8 trucks. California, for example, offers the hybrid and zero-emission truck and bus voucher incentive project which features incentives of up to $120,000 for Class 8 sustainable vehicles. With the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022's $40,000 incentive, the Tesla Semi would be more than affordable in states like California. Moving to the next update, Tesla supporters are petitioning Senator Manchin to stop excessive PHEV subsidies. Tesla supporters are petitioning Senator Manchin is looking to stop the excessive plug-in hybrid EV, PHEV subsidies, in the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Rob Moore, the host of Tesla Daily, started the petition recently. So far, it has more than 3,000 signatures at the time of this video. Earlier, he asked on Twitter if any member of the Senate Democrats could justify a $7,500 tax credit for vehicles with 7 kilowatt hours batteries, which cost less than $1,000. He added that it was a flagrant waste of resources that ensures we fall behind in clean vehicles. It also enables the further destruction of our environment. He followed up his tweet with a link to the petition, which in Rob's own words, is being created to express concern about proposed changes to electric vehicle tax credits included in the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Following the petition, Rob shared a template for those wanting to contact their senators about the $7,500 tax credit for plug-in hybrid vehicles. Although plug-in hybrids are great for those who aren't ready to fully switch to a fully electric vehicle, but we believe the $7,500 EV tax credit should be for EVs. Unfortunately, there is a loophole. Plug-in hybrids electric vehicles are classified as EVs, despite the fact that they are also powered by fossil fuels. The owners of these vehicles have the option of gas or clean energy. In his petition, Rob said, unfortunately, real-world testing has shown that PHEV's role in reducing emissions has been dramatically overestimated. According to research by the International Council on Clean Transportation ICCT, PHEV fuel consumption and tailpipe CO2 emissions during real-world driving, on average, are approximately two to four times higher than type approval values. What do you think about this? Share your thoughts in the comments. Moving to the last update, Tesla Model Y shipments from Giga Texas are hitting their pace. During the second quarter earnings call, Tesla CEO Elon Musk noted that Gigafactory Texas is poised to hit the 1,000 vehicle per week mark, hopefully in the next few months. Recent observations from drone operators who are closely monitoring the Giga Texas complex suggest that Tesla is working hard to achieve this ambitious goal. Tesla is quite unique in the way that the company allows enthusiasts to monitor and observe the progress of its upcoming factories. Giga Texas is no different, so the facility's progress is constantly being chronicled by a number of drone operators. One of these is Jeff Roberts, who has been flying over the Giga Texas site since its earliest days. As noted by Roberts, in a recently uploaded video, Giga Texas appears to be shipping out larger numbers of Model Y vehicles. This bodes well for the facility and Tesla's Model Y deliveries this third quarter, as Giga Texas's vehicles could help add to the output of the Fremont factory. The Fremont plant, after all, still produces the majority of the Model Ys being delivered by Tesla in the United States. Gigafactory Texas is Tesla's latest and most advanced plant, but it is still in its early stages. As noted by the company in its Q2 2022 earnings call, 
there is still a lot of work and optimizations that will be done in Giga Texas. For example, Tesla is looking to start 4680 battery cell production at the site within the next couple of months at the end of the third quarter. More importantly, Elon Musk also noted that Tesla is confident that Gigafactory Texas could achieve a Model Y production rate of 5,000 units per week by the end of the year. By the end of 2023, Musk noted that Giga Texas and Berlin could hit 10,000 cars per week. I'm confident we'll get to 5,000 cars a week in Austin and Berlin by the end of this year or early next year, and probably but not certainly, 10,000 cars a week at both locations by the end of next year," Musk said. That's it for now. So what are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments. Stay tuned at the Electric Arena for all the latest Tesla and electric vehicle news.